A number of scholars and journalists who gathered recently in London to discuss the growing menace of terrorism in South Asia and its neighbours have categorically blamed Pakistan for deteriorating peace in the region. The statements came in a seminar which was organised by the Democracy Forum, a non-governmental organisation that works intensively to promote the ideals of democracy, pluralism and tolerance. In the light of growing number of terror attacks in South Asia, the seminar focused at the fundamentals of terrorism in the region and its proliferation thereafter. Professor and a counter-terrorism expert Dr. Christine Fair asserted that it was Pakistan which gave birth to terrorism in order to set and achieve its diabolic agenda in the region. There would be no Pakistan Taliban if there were no Afghan Taliban, if there were no Jaish al-Muhammad, if there were no Lashkar al-Jangvi. In other words, these are all actors that the state has either, in the case of the Taliban and Jaish al-Muhammad, explicitly groomed and nurtured to kill outside of its borders, and which it has been ambivalent about, Lashkar al-Jangvi and Sifay Sabay Pakistan, when they kill within its borders. The United States, which supported Pakistan for years, has long been frustrated by what it sees as Pakistan's reluctance to act against groups such as the Afghan Taliban and the Haqqani Network, who they believe exploit safe haven on Pakistani soil to launch attacks in Afghanistan. Amid a growing international pressure, Pakistan proclaimed that it had launched a crackdown against all the terror outfits in Pakistan. However, soon it came out with its template excuse of deficit of funds. Uh, they've been trying to do some uh, cosmetic uh, uh, actions on ground. Uh, we saw the UN recently uh, designated um, Maulana Masood Azhar as a, as a, as a global terrorist uh, who's part of Jaish Muhammad after the whole Balakot, uh, Balakot and, and Pulwama incident, uh, after China uh, withdrew its, its, its um, uh, reservations on that. Uh, and so because of that, we've seen Jaish Muhammad, uh, which is uh, also reincarnated in, reincarnated in many ways and, and, has, and many times, uh, has gone a little bit underground, but they still are, are, are there managing a lot of things. Uh, we, we saw that they were going to take over their madrasas and then take over their, their uh, seminaries and their mosques, uh, Jaish Muhammad's and Lashkar Taibas and all of these Kashmiri militant groups. But then there was a story that recently came out in which they said, we don't have the money or the capability or the resources. So they're basically asking for more money, which is what Pakistan does, ask for more money, on ground, do nothing, then re keep repeating that cycle. It's been doing that with the Americans for a very long time. Perhaps it'll do that with China now. Whether it is Washington or Beijing, Pakistan has seemingly lost all its allies with latest blow coming from China, which gave up on Masood Azhar's designation as global terrorist. Now it becomes imperative for Islamabad to mend its domestic as well as external policies which were essentially focused at spreading mayhem across its borders. Else the day is not far when it will become a pariah state languishing in the blacklist of the Financial Action Task Force.